Google's official search API is extremely expensive, but fortunately, there is an open source Python library called Google Search to scrape Google search results. In this video, I will share how to create a Google search tool to give your Pydentic AI agent Google search capability using the Google search Python library. If you are new to Pydentic AI, you can check out my video on how to get started from the link in the description below. Launch your terminal and run the command to install the Google Search Python library. In your project directory, create a folder called Tools. We will use the Tools folder to store Pydentic AI toolsets. In the Tools folder, create two Python files, init.py and Google Search Tools.py. We will create the Google Search Tool in the Google Search Tools module. And the init module will simplify the module import by making the tools directory as a package. Now open the Google Search Tools Python file in your code editor. In the script, import the Python dependencies and set up the logger. To ensure the outputs we feed to an Pydentic AI agent is always consistent, create the data model classes to store the results. From the Google Search Python package, the API can only return URL, page title, and page description, which for most of the use cases should be sufficient. To create the Google Search tool, create a class called Google Search tool and set the global parameter in the init method. The reason why I prefer to use a class instead of a function to create a tool is that with class, it is easier to manage if later you decided to add a few more Google search related functions. And if multiple functions share the same settings, you only need to change it once. Here I noticed I forgot to add the doc string for the sleep interval parameter. The sleep interval parameter basically set the delay between each request. Now create a class method called Google search. And this will be the tool function we're going to assign to the Pydenic AI AI agent. By using the class method decorator to convert the Google search function into a class method, we can call the Google search function directly without creating an instance of the class, which you will see in action in a second. Inside the method, we are going to log the arguments received from the tool call. The time function is optional, but I'm adding it there to calculate the tool call time. Next, use the search function to make a Google search. When using the search function, if we set the advanced field to false, it will only return the URLs of the results. So when we compile the results, we need to iterate each item first and set the title and description fields to none if the advanced flag is set to true when creating a Google search result object. In the final step, create the Google search results object with total result count and search results list and return the object. Now let's test the Google search tool function to make sure it works first. In the main routine, Define the search query and call the Google search function directly from the Google search tool class. If we create the Google search function as a regular method, we will need to create a Google search tool instance first. Save the file and run the script. Here from the output, we can see the web search results are generated. Now open the init Python file. Type the import statement shown here. Instead of from tools.google search tools, we can type tools instead to simplify the import statement. Save the file and we are done creating the Google search tool. Use the Google search tool in Pydentic AI. When you set up an agent in the tools parameter, Add the tool function like what I have here. Now in the request, I will ask, search for the best 20 coffee shops in San Francisco. 
if everything is set up correctly. From the log, we should see the agent makes a tool call with the parameter values used. And here are the 20 coffee shops the agent found from making the Google search tool call. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope you find the video useful. If there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.